I'm from Audiovisual Media Services, and I suppose in 2010, we were given a very interesting project to design a remote teaching and learning room. The challenge was to design a technologically advanced room and with a flexible, flexible teaching space. The room was, I suppose, the intention behind the room it was to allow lecturers to develop new teaching methods and develop uh, new technologies for this e-learning environment. The room was to include video conferencing, high-definition projection, a three-camera uh, recording studio. It had to have live streaming, an interactive whiteboard, an interactive touch screen, and all these had to be incorporated in an easy-to-use format. <laughs> we looked at some similar smart rooms or RTL rooms in both the US and the UK, we found that they were often, often underused because they required a lot of support and training. So we learned from other people's mistakes really and I suppose we being late starters we took advantage of some changes in technology that had happened in the meanwhile. And I suppose we used some of our experience gained over lots of years in supporting people within UCC and we designed our own in-house solution to the problem. Um, we incorporated the video conferencing, and I suppose the video conferencing technology had moved on, and it had moved to a high-definition format. That pushed us into a situation where we had to use high-definition cameras, right? Um, it increased the cost a little bit. While all this was happening, we had the Crow Park Agreement, which meant that in the original thinking of these RTL rooms, they were supposed to be manually supported. You would have somebody sitting in the back here operating the cameras. But because of the co Park agreement and uh, because we weren't able to take on any extra staff, we were forced into a, a, a place where we had to automate the whole process. So we looked at um, video automation for the cameras. We looked for automation for the capturing of the lectures and that brought us into looking at some of the lecture capture formats that were out there. We looked at Sonic Foundry, which was probably the best one available. But at the time, it was 25,000 euros per room, and we just didn't think the college could afford an outlay like that. And it wasn't really scalable to what we thought. Matt O'Horn, Pat has talked about that already. Um, it was just at the beginning of uh, its research, and we couldn't go with that either. Echo 360, there were a lot of people using Echo 360, um, but because we were after moving to high definition, we had to, Echo 360 didn't have a high definition <coughs> capabilities at that time, so we were forced to look for another option. And Panopto was the one that ticked all the boxes for us. It was software based, it was web based, so it would work with any computer anywhere in the world. It allows for remote schedu scheduling of capture. It's easily scalable over the whole university. It works on a laptop as well as in a room like this, so it's very flexible. It has full integration with Blackboard. Right? You can record your course, and it can go directly to your Blackboard course, and the students can watch it that evening. And only the students who are registered on that Blackboard course can watch it. So you don't have the same worries like a lot of people don't like to be seen on camera. A lot of people were afraid that their colleagues would be looking at them. So you don't have that problem because you can tie it into the Blackboard course. Um, it'll stream in high definition. And for anybody who's interested in editing it afterwards, it has a very, very simple interface for editing. Now, I'm going to hand over to Posi, and he's going to talk a little bit about Panopto and the basics behind it. I'll show you a quick um, overview of what the system looks like after you have recorded a video. And um, the way we think this is probably working best is if um, you let us know in advance, say uh, two weeks in advance when you want to record a video, and you say, okay, I want to record a video in Bool 2 from 9 to 10, 
every Wednesday, uh, for example. We can schedule it, and um, then all you have to do is turn up in the lecture theater and deliver your lecture, and it will be recorded and available a few hours later. So I'll show you an example. Um, let's have a look. Uh, these maybe. This is something that uh, was recorded in Brookfield, um, and it shows uh, the picture of the lecturer over there, and then the slides that they were browsing through as the lecture was happening. And um, here you get chapter marks for all the slides that uh, they went through, and it automatically generates, it, it picks up the heading from your PowerPoint slides, and adds it here as a as a chapter mark. So you click on any of these and it'll go to that slide and that point in the video um, when he was talking about that slide. If I double click here I can see the video only of the presenter or I can go to the full view of the slides. Hmm. Actually, just a little technical glitch there. Let me just try another one. The NERTL conference from um, was it last week? Yeah, so just, I can watch the PowerPoint um, only if I want to and just listen rather than see the whole thing. Um, when, when I log, when I log in with my own username, I can um, add notes here for myself if I thought something about this particular slide that I want to remember or look it up later, then I can put up notes here and uh, they'll be saved for my username then when I log in again and if I watch that lecture again. Similarly, if I'm watching a live stream of a lecture, which is also possible, um, I can ask questions from the lecturer as the lecture is happening. Now, there's a bit of a delay. There's about a 20-second delay uh, after I send the question and when the lecturer sees it. But if I was lecturing here now, I would see a little pop-up here in the corner with the, with the question that um, the student was asking. Um, Let's see what else. Uh, so if I, if I wanted to, um, for example, edit, if you were a lecturer and you record a lecture and there was something there that you said that you don't, don't actually want to include later on, you can go into this edit mode here. And it loads up with a very simple user interface where you can um, set up kind of start points and end points or um, cut out sections from the middle. Like you can see in this particular one here, this section is included. Um, that's not included, that's included, and that's included, and so forth. So you could splice out bits that you weren't happy with afterwards. Um, then what... Uh, sorry. Um, other options of delivering the lecture other than um, having a link online is uh, podcast. So you could have um, a podcast um, as a video with both um, the lecturer speaking here in the corner and <coughs> the slides. Or you could have a primary video only with just the lecturer talking, or secondary video only with just the slides and, and voice. So some people might want to have themselves as, um, as showing on the video. Then you could just have uh, slides and, and, the, and the voice. Similarly, you can download MP3 only if you want just audio. And you can subscribe to an RSS feed for um, that lecture. So if you want to have a, say, a whole module as an online lectures, you can subscribe to it as an RSS feed. Um, that's about everything that I can think of. Any questions?